Learman, go ahead and clap. Arjuna, go ahead and smile. There we go. We are now in Oh, that is creepy. <laughs> Juno's possessed. Bring me the priest. Welcome to What's It Good, the podcast that reviews movies and TV shows. Today, we're taking a look at The Pope's Exorcist. I'm Ravi, joined by my two brothers, Arjuna. Krishna. And our producer, Michael. And, and we are we was, are, it was it good. good. Nailed it. And we are was it two, good. Two out of four got that. That was yeah. good. <laughs> One of two these days half. you'll stop doing that. Uh, by the way, guys, I don't know if you planned this, but the lighting behind Ravi is especially <laughs> heavenly and ethereal. <laughs> That's because we're shooting this in the middle of the day. And I don't think we've done a midday no, pod in a while. This. You planned this just for this movie. I think that's because things work in mysterious ways. <laughs> or there's this thing called coincidence. You Co- decide. Like this movie. Like this movie. <laughs> so who's, um, before we like get into like, you know, uh, our junior DVD chapter listing, our one word impressions, you know, maybe bold predictions, probably not bold predictions. Bold predictions. And then, what? you know, obviously asking the, the big question, you know, was it good? Uh, let's back up a, a little bit here because this isn't like the normal type of movie that we would review in this pod. Um, whose idea was uh, it? Was yours and Krishna's? God, in particular. Yeah. Damn it! Okay. You were both like, guys, yeah. we saw you were like Arjuna. We saw this trailer. Right. We have to see this movie. Okay. And I was like, all right, you know, well, you know, it's this is fair. Like we always pitch stuff, and guys seem passionate about it. And I was like, at the very worst, sure. it'll make a fun little pod. You know. <laughs> Uh, so and that's what we got. We we saw the movie. We did see the movie, and Ravi, you, myself, and Michael are fresh off this movie. We just saw it, like we did. We, like just an hour ago. Less, yeah, about that, right? Yeah. Roughly. Wow. Possessed by thoughts of it. <laughs> let's get into one word impressions, Krishna. Let's start with you. How would you describe this movie with one word? Uh, I'm gonna say blasphemy. Wow. And and here's why. Because the whole, like, during this movie, I just kept having this thought that all of religion is a great source of uh, fiction. As in, like, it provides good source material to, you know, uh, tell dramatic stories. And this is all religions, by the way. And, you know, I was like, oh, you know, if I said this to someone who was incredibly religious, it might sound like blasphemy. So, yeah, that's uh, why my one-word impression is blasphemy. <laughs> it's interesting. Because I was thinking blasphemous thoughts. <laughs> can, I say, can I say something blasphemous? Blasphemous. Please. When I hear the word blasphemy, I always think of raspberries. Do, is that because why, raspberries why we, why are... Why do we dive into that? <laughs> blasphemous yeah. to you? Yeah. Raspberries. I don't know. Just they, are they like, like the poor man's strawberry? I, I like them in like uh, ice cream, like the, uh, a raspberry ice cream. Like on a cheesecake, oh, okay. In a smoothie, oh, okay. Especially like if you're doing like a green smoothie, you throw some of those in there, mask that disgusting like spinach taste. Kale, kale, raspberries, Ugh. yeah, raspberries. Blasphemously good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Blasphemous raspberries. Especially when you dip them in Nutella. That's what? pushing the. That's, that's blasphemy. That doesn't, <laughs> that's, that's legitimately <laughs> blasphemous. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Arjuna, how would you describe? The Pope's Exorcist. Uh, my one impression for the Pope's Exorcist is faith. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Oh wow. There we go. I said Jesus. <laughs> God damn it. Thank you very time. Said God. <laughs> it exists. Damn it. <laughs> faith. Right? Uh, I put my faith into you and Krishna uh, <laughs> to see this movie. And the theme of this movie, or a theme of this movie, is is about faith, right? right. You know, I talk about faith, having the faith. Um, You're just going to say faith a lot, aren't you? You know, it's about faith. I had faith during the movie that it would, you know, conclude and end Mm -hmm. and that we would continue to, you know, pot about it and and go from there. So faith is my word. Wow. Interesting. It's a good good word. Mine's going to be probably hilarious. Is it belief? Nope. Mine's going to be <laughs> acting. Hack. <laughs> oh, I thought it was legitimately hilarious. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> I mean, that, that probably would have been better, honestly. No, it's going to be acting because I think uh, the, the two individuals that did the best, Russell Crowe and then the uh, actor that played um, Henry. I don't actually Assistant see. Priest? Hey, where is it? Peter D'Souza Fagone. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the kid that played Henry, I think he did a really, really amazing yeah. job uh, because, you know, obviously that's not his voice when he's demon possessed. Uh, the, so the voice was uh, Ralph uh, Innocent. A- and again, he did a great job, I think, with the demon voice. Um, but the kid, especially, like, you know, the director's telling this kid, hey, you need to be possessed and, like, really sell it because we're going to go in and do voiceover. It's not going to obviously be your voice. And then, obviously, Russell Crowe just, you know, he. <laughs> he was on a different level <laughs> compared oh, to everybody stole else. The show, <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely a different, this, different this movie. Is, was, yeah, yeah. It's very, very, very good. Very good acting, all around. Acting, acting, acting. Mm. Yes. <laughs> so, if you put all those three words together, I don't think they make a coherent sentence, or do they? Blasphemy, faith, acting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're going to become an actor, don't you have to like have some faith? Faith. Yeah. And then in some roles, they will be blasphemous to people. It's true. No. Oh. There you go. <laughs> like this one? Like, yeah, like this. Yeah, like this. Wait, no, this film was great. Uh, oh, boy. So yeah, one I, I really can't tell which way we're leading here. <laughs> I mean, uh, we ask the question at the end of the pod all the time. That's true. And sometimes, that's true. This one's going to be interesting. You know, sometimes we, 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 we kind of indicate which way we're feeling, but I feel like we're all playing a little close at the chest right well, sometimes now. Sometimes we also yeah. troll. That's true. That's right. true. That's a great point too. Uh, you yeah. you definitely love. Oh, hundred percent. I'm I'm trolling on this one. I don't even know how I really feel about this film. <laughs> you thought so much about how to troll about it. You've actually forgotten your true. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> I don't know on the what movie my tr- itself. I don't know what my truth is. <laughs> oh, you, maybe shit. if you had some faith. Maybe if I had some faith, you could figure. Yeah. It out. Or maybe if I had uh, it was better at acting. Better at yeah, acting. Yeah, there you go. And so and and less blasphemy in you. Exactly. In my views on. Films. <laughs> Let's get into our Junior's DVD chapter listing, and Krishna is going to be the one that reads it because Krishna has to. And Krishna, don't worry, I'm not going to make you do it in the voice of a demon. That's just too obvious. No. You're going to do it in the voice of Russell Crowe in this. Film. Why? <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know how to do that accent. It's what is it? Basically, an Italian accent. Oh man, I don't know how to do an Italian accent. I, I can only do it like. Uh, how about the okay? How about this exaggerated how about, Mario? How about this? You know exactly. How about you do it in the accent of Mario from Super Mario or the Mario franchise? Do you want Chris Pratt's version? No, 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 no. The original, <laughs> uh, the original uh, Super Nintendo or whatever. It's it's like there's, there's no, well, in the original, right? There's there's no voice. Well, he in said the game? in the game. Yeah, I guess you're right. So when it's the a person me. Ever, here is that it's a me, a Mario N sixty four, I guess. Maybe I don't know. Oh, I don't shit. know when the first time it appeared in video game. But anyway, oh. Christian, let's hear it. All right, this is not going to be good. Uh, our junior's DVD chapter listing for the Pope's Exorcist, Devil Pigs, Coffee Hot, The Haunted Villa. It's five o'clock somewhere. Angry Kids. Forgive me, brother, for I'm a creep. Secret tunnel. Secret, 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 secret tunnel. What the fuck? It's the final exorcism. Russell Crowe, Oscar-winning actor. Let me tell you about the Avengers Initiative. <laughs> if I was possessed. <laughs> <laughs> Christian, what do you mean by that? Please, please uh, elaborate <laughs> on what you mean by if I was possessed. Well, we have the movie. Yes. We have, what was it, like two hours? We have like, if it was two hours, we have one hour and uh, 57 minutes of this movie. And then we get to the end and um, it's very, um, I don't know if it's, it's, I was very confused. I was like, who's possessed? Who isn't? What's this act? Is the, is the story that this is supposedly based on if this is based on a real story, then I'm, I was just very confused by the by the ending there. And it seems like everyone and their mother could have been possessed. So you went end. with you were you were going with the Oprah giving cars away scenario where everybody yeah. was possessed. You get a possession. You get a possession. You get a possession. It sounds like a yeah. good basketball strategy. Oh, uh, you know what? For the Boston Celtics, it would be great. Uh, this feels relevant because of the playoffs or something. They're actually playing right now. As we record this pod. They and just won. When you're listening, because it's the NBA playoffs, so there's a lot of basketball games. Oh, wow. 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 
Uh, the 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 Russell Crowe character doesn't care about basketball. He his nightmare what was it France winning the World Cup. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> soccer. Yeah, that makes sense. Football, that, you know, tracks for Europe. Yeah, it's actually interesting. You bring up the the is this is loosely or somewhat based on a true story. It's based on uh, Russell Crowe's character, who was an actual uh, exorcist, um, Father Gabriel Amorth. 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 Amort. Amort. Amorth. Amort. Amort. He actually wrote uh, a couple of memoirs, too, um, that came out, I believe, in 2014, 2015-ish. And these, this film is loosely based on uh, those <laughs> Well, those and he memoirs. wrote previous books, as he talks about in the movie. And they think. were good. Did you read the book? And they are quite good. good. They're good. They are yeah. good books. Yeah. So interesting that it's based on uh, real real life things that, that happen. Um, obviously, speaking of real life things, the film obviously starts out where... You know, um, Gabrielle is in a small village, I want to say, in France? I think he was or in, in Italy. Spain or Italy. He speaking He's in a small Italian. village in Europe. We'll just yeah. place it there. On there Earth. There we go. Can't be it's, wrong now. Well, Depends. Depends on what universe. They never call it Earth. <laughs> sure, they, they never say they're on Earth. So, uh, But he goes to obviously a small little village, and uh, he's performing an exorcism. Uh, which he believes isn't real exorcism, but actually just somebody who may be suffering from some kind of mental health. Um, and Arjun, you actually said something interesting on the car ride home in terms of what you think the film was potentially trying to say and then may have shifted. Yeah, I, I, th- I think for like the first half an hour, especially with that scene, and then also as you learn about his past where he kind of failed a woman uh, because she had mental health issues, uh, I felt like the movie was trying to talk about how that extra like maybe exorcisms as we know it right of like demons possessing your soul doesn't exist and like exorcists aren't these kind of last resort priests that come in and and do these like really this dark art almost right like at least i'm no horror movie buff but like when i think of exorcisms within film right it's like here is this this kind of top secret like priest who like dabbles in the dark arts themselves and is kind of bad, you know? And this movie felt like it, it changed, at least for me, changed the perception of like, oh, he's trying to help people, right? right? Like he, and and they even say when he's in his like tribunal, when he's talking to the tribunal of other high priests and they're like chastising him, um, his allies, like 98% of the exorcists he's performed um, those people go on, he's recommended like doctors or medical professionals or whatnot. So it almost felt like, Oh, like the bulk of these aren't exorcisms as right. we know, but it's mental health issues and like other issues where people kind of need help. Uh, and I thought that the movie was maybe going to go that way and you were never going to know, like, is this a real demonic possession or is this like an extreme case of like mental health issues? And they very clearly were like, Nope, this is a real, uh, Demon devil. It's not. It's not just real. It's the big tamale. Yeah, it's the I big mean, one. It was obviously real because you had the the naked lady covered in blood that exploded blood everywhere. Yep. So that's real. It's interesting what you say, Krishna, about him being the big tamale, and they did say the king of hell, but they did also show that there was a Lucifer. Like it, it listed Lucifer separate, which I thought was really interesting because he's supposed to be the king of hell. Uh, so, uh, Michael, I'm really glad you're here, actually, because uh, I don't think <laughs> us three are, we're not, we don't. Finally, I we're have not, a reason to be here. Yeah, I no, I mean, because I have questions here. about that, right? Like, uh, where does as, Asmodeus, 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 yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Asmodeus, yeah, Asmodeus. yeah, I was, because that, that was my question. Where, where did he rank? We did see the very clear Lucifer thing. So... You know, it was like I thought it was the big, the big bad one, and then you know, exactly, it was like it's. See, and I then uh, there's 199 other fallen angels, and right? Demons. So all demons. of Bunch of that sequels. whole 200 number, I don't know where they got that from. And the only time I've ever heard of Asmodeus or Asmodeus is in Dungeons and Dragons. So also, oh, this is a D and D movie. This is a prequel of a D and D movie. Got Boom. it. Oh, Done. My. <laughs> wow, we're gonna get roasted. They can call us yeah. witches, aren't they? I mean, it goes back to my one word impression, though. Uh, Blasphemous. Faith. Blas- blasphemy, where it's like, it, I mean, honestly, all religion has built in lore. Mm. Like, Hinduism would be the greatest sci fi ever made. 
Greek mythology would be the greatest scandalous family drama you've ever seen. You know, clearly some elements of Christianity have some excellent horror elements. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's and, and that and that, that's actually so for me. I'm, just, I'm at risk of giving away my uh, end the ending to this <laughs> prematurely. I had a lot of fun with this movie. I had a ton of fun, and uh, one of the elements that I found really interesting was sort of like the the them explaining like. I hate to use the word, but like the lore, the, the theology, the theology. Yeah, that, that's a much better word. Thank you. Uh, just <laughs> FYI, Asmodeus, Asmodeus is considered a king of hell under Lucifer, the emperor of hell. Yeah. So basically it's like the prime minister of England and then the mayor of London. Or it's like uh, Sauron having his Nazgul. Yeah, the witch king. No, or Morgoth oh, the and then king. Sauron. Well, no, but the Witch King, though, doesn't rule anything except the nine, except the fear of everyone when they kill them. He just straight up rules. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Speaking of but rules, yeah. this was listed as a horror film. <laughs> was now, it, though? Typically, when you see a movie and the genre is clearly listed as X, Y, or Z, you go into the film and you expect to... Uh, see or you know realize that the film is that genre so this film was listed as a horror but it really was a comedy (laughs) so my question for you guys who fucked up (laughs) well i think that i think maybe 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 part of that is the marketing versus the movie itself right you know when you this movie was released by sony uh, ultimately, so Sony might have decided that this was the way they wanted to cut the trailer and present it. This was the release date. They wanted to have more of a horror angle to it because, at, at least for me, it felt like all of the, the scary parts were in the trailer, right? Um, yeah, there was nothing really. I don't think there didn't yeah, seem like there was a ton more that we didn't see in the trailer that was in the movie in terms of the the scary parts uh, or the more gratuitous parts. I mean, there was obviously the stuff you can't put in like a regular TV, YouTube type of trailer. Um, but like yeah. what? Uh, like like the, nudity? Like the, <laughs> like yeah, the nudity, nudity, nudity. Nakedness? And the, the woman covered in blood and exploding. Yeah, no. Uh, in I should have put it in. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it just felt like maybe it was a studio decision to, I guess it's hard, it might be hard to market a movie that's like, here's a supernatural comedy about religion that might be not, doesn't go over well, right? With like, different groups if you're like sure you know. but let me ask you Wait. guys this though like no one here went to go see the movie expecting it to be pure horror right the reason me and ravi That's even true. brought it up yeah. was russell crowe's hilarious accent right that was why we were that was the, what hooked me and then uh the the other the rest of it looked like kind of ridiculous so yeah i, I don't know at least I didn't go in expecting a horror. I did go in expecting... Actually, to be honest, I don't know what I was expecting. I was like, I, I had no idea what to expect. Do you think it was actually a comedy, right? Like, No, no it was actually it was a horror to. movie. It didn't seem yeah. any funnier than most horror movies to me. It was just campy, you know? Like, it was I super like, campy. Was like, like horror movies. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, they just leaned into the campiness, which was a smart decision by them, not to make it, like, so well, here, self-serious. Here's a bigger question for everybody to, like, kind of see where everyone is on the on the, the scale of, like, comedy horror to, like, comedy, I guess. What does everyone here consider The Evil Dead? A pure horror film or a co- action comedy? That's I've a, never seen it. Oh, well, then that's awkward. I think Evil Dead is a pure horror, but oh. Army of Darkness is a horror comedy. Yeah, I think by the time you get to Army of Darkness, I guess it's similar to like Terminator One versus Terminator Two. Terminator One is considered a horror film, and Terminator Two is considered an action thriller. Yeah, Yeah. that's why they're both really great because they're so different. And Terminator Three is considered a hot pot, a comedy, garbage. Garbage. (laughs) No, no, no. Terminator Three is a comedy. Terminators have all had various levels of disappointment, and then they came out with. What was the last one that came out? That was actually pretty good, but nobody saw it. A Salvation? Dark, Dark, Dark Hunter? Fate. Dark Fate. Dark Fate. Is that the one with Matt Smith? No. Yes. No, that's Genesis. 
Oh, oh wait. Dark Fate. Amelia Har- no, Dark, Amelia, with, uh, uh, Dark Fate is with um, the return of Linda Hamilton. Right. And Mackenzie uh, Davis was in yeah, it. Yeah, Mackenzie Davis. That's that one. And uh, and the Terminator was that Di- guy. Not Diego Luna. Um, Rodriguez. Yeah. What was his name? Uh, he played from, the, he played Ghost Rider, and, um, and he's also in. Agents in of uh, Shield. Last of Us as well. He's Last yeah, of he's Us. He's the brother. Yep. Yep. He was the Terminator. Yeah, that one was actually decent, but then everyone was so done with Terminator at that point. Nobody really went to go to the theater. That's so. the one where they just straight up kill John Connor right away. Yes. Yeah. 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 The appropriate as a kid. thing to do. Yeah. Because yeah. there was another Terminator came back and we're like, "Yep, we did it." <laughs> and then he walks. Doesn't he like? Doesn't he like walk into the ocean after he does it? He's like, "I have no purpose." Basically, and then <laughs> and then he becomes good. Yeah. Then she. Re- <laughs> <laughs> she's like, "Oh, he uh, took out my." She's like, "He took out my son. Now we're gonna be friends, best friends forever." That's how that works. The D burdener. So you know, obviously, the Terminator has been is something that's been going on forever and ever, and nobody really wants it anymore. Do you think? based on the ending of this film where it is very kind of Avengers like where it's like we have this whole space set up and we've got the map and like there's been details dropped about 199 other sites in the world. Uh, There's now like a buddy cop duo. Are we going to get more? You think? I think this is rife for an animated spinoff. Oh, Uh, anime style too. No, just no? like traditional, like remember WB Saturday morning cartoon? Wow. <laughs> so what, they do with the show. what? Do you think that <laughs> get no, like uh, it. never mind? Get you know get voice actors that sound nothing like the original cast. Ignore half of the continuity. Get Chris Pratt have, for the priest. Have like you know three hundred episodes because you know it, each episode <clears throat> doesn't have to be just one place, right? It could be could like two parters, and yeah. then like they do some, and then they undo some, and they add like another bunch. I'm just saying that if you're a particular group, religious group, you've kind of been given a new franchise that you can use. Oh my god! To <laughs> push whatever message you need to. For Unbelievable. Reasons. So I'm just saying they could be a future here. I don't like Arjuna's idea of the animated. I do think, <clears throat> you know, this movie at the time of this taping of the spot, this budget for this film was what a uh, 18 million. Uh, as the tame of this pod, it's only made sixteen million and some change uh, total. The international is killing the domestic right now. International's brought in twelve million, but it did release a week before domestic. Domestic is only like four point three. Um, but you know, I'm hoping this movie does kind of bring in and make its money a little bit more. And you know, Russell Crowe, he's a great actor. But he was a terrible Zeus. We don't really need him in the big cinematic things. He needs his own franchise. And I yes. really feel like <laughs> this, this is could it. be his thing. You know? <laughs> yeah. He's created this character, this this Gabe. Can I call him Gabe? Gabe, this character. That's what the demon kept calling him. Sure, we're going to call him Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> Gabriel. Do we have any friends named Gabriel? Because I don't want a friend named Gabe. No, I don't, mm. I don't think so. I don't have any friends. My best friend I've got guys. family. Oh, boy. I thought, uh, yeah, I thought Russell Crowe was... Like delightful as this whiskey drinking Italian priest, exorcist, exorcist uh, yeah. you know who did also was there a line in there where he's like I've been a teacher, I've been a journalist, yeah. you know he's he's a worldly man as well, uh, and I don't you know the, every time he's like giving advice and like very down the earth mm-hmm. kind of demeanor, even though he's dealing with this like supernatural stuff. I thought he was great. I would not mind seeing more. Exorcist Unchained, you know, <laughs> whatever this sequel looks like. Exorcist Unchained. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like, exorcist unleash unleash the exorcist, exorcist upon the world. Just I mean, let him go to town. I'm <laughs> I'm here for it. I think we've got two, two like two two out of two out of four so far. I said yeah. You want you want, you want you want more, don't you? <laughs> uh, I think everyone here wants more. I think that's absolutely. I think I'm gonna universally say everyone on this pod wants more Russell Crowe. I want Russell yes. Crowe's fucking. Asses. I want Russell Crowe to do what makes him happiest, and if that's sequels to this, so be it. I uh, I lost my faith a little bit um, during this movie, and I will not be joining him for that ride. But I wish him well. Oh, wow. 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 You are not a believer. Not a believer. No. That's blasphemy. Yeah. Not even in You're his ability to look somehow both fat and buff at the same time. I mean, that is true. Only we Russell Crowe. My, yeah. my question here actually now is, we know certain members of this podcast have fascinations with Gerard Butler. Of course. Uh, do uh, Is Gerard Butler being moved aside now 
for a new hero that we stand for? Ooh, and is wow. it Russell Crowe? I mean, I've so all, I've I, yeah. Go ahead, Christian. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I was gonna say I've I've always been a Russell Crowe fan. Like, uh, I think the movie that put him on the map here was Gladiator. Yeah, and that movie came out of nowhere. Like, and even though it was Ridley Scott, right? Uh, that movie flew so far under the radar that when it got big, it was after its theatrical run. Like right. people found it like a little bit afterward, and. Russell Crowe is phenomenal in that. In fact, I think throughout this whole movie, I was like, this makes me really want to go back and watch Gladiator. Fantastic. Get ready for the Gladiator sequel. Well, they, 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 I was just going to say, they can't because, they, you know, Maximus, spoiler alert, is dead. Well, so, uh, what? Cr- Christian, here's a spoiler for he you. He does need uh, a franchise and he's Here's got a spoiler one. for you. Not only is a Gladiator sequel happening, it's been greenlit and cast. Is Russell Crowe in it? Is it a prequel? No. It, or is it an actual no, sequel? It's an actual he, sequel. He's without a ghost. Russell Crowe. Oh, then it's not Gladiator. It's not, it, Gladiator. Call that something else. Call Get Gladiator. that shit out of here. <laughs> Gladiator without Russell Crowe is not Gladiator. Just call it, I don't know. You know, to be you fair, we're actually forgetting, because uh, I just pulled him up, uh, Russell Crowe on IMDb. Um, we are forgetting his other greatest role a beautiful in a big Insider. franchise. No. Oh. Jor-El. In the yeah. Schneiderverse. Oh, yeah. He oh. is Superman's father. Oh, he was you also... You forget that quite a bit. He was also Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in the supposed dark universe oh, that yeah. was going to happen that Tom in that Cruise mommy killed. Movie? Yeah, Tom yep. Cruise I never killed watched him. that movie. Oh, it was terrible. Don't bother. It was yeah. so yeah. bad. That's why I've yeah. never bothered to watch it. Yeah. Christian looks Damn. confused and hurt. Yeah, well, I didn't see that movie, and it sounds like I dodged a bullet. I did forget all about Beautiful Mind. Fantastic movie. He won the Oscar and for Insider. both Gladiator and, and Beautiful, Beautiful Mind. Mind. Yeah. Wait, what was the one? What, what movie, Lerman? The Insider. Remember that? I don't. I don't think I saw. Where he the was whistleblowed the tobacco industry, and Ooh. they went after him. And oh, I remember that. He movie. played a big oh, old shit. like nerd accountant. Maybe it wasn't the tobacco oh. industry. It was some big industry. I'll have to check that, that out. There's that movie he was I, in I think with Brian Gosling. The nice oh. guys. Oh, the nice guys. That's I just another watched really that. good one too. I love that movie. That's a good movie. I thought I saw a rumor that there was a sequel coming. That would be sick. Was it called The Not Nice the, Guys? Yeah, The <laughs> the Smelly Guys. I think yeah. it's called The Nice Nice Guys. I always felt like Gerard the nicer guys. was a knockoff Russell Crowe. Oh, Ooh, I like big that. Time. That's a take. That's a take, I mean, and I love it. There's something like 10, 15 years, I think, between them, roughly. So, yeah, I could see that Like maybe Gerard Butler in his younger career was like, oh, who do I kind of resemble in Hollywood? Russell Crowe. You saw Russell Crowe. They both have weird accents. They both. Well, get Russell Crowe's Australian, public. right? Right, and Gerard Butler's <laughs> British, right? S- Scottish. Scottish. Excuse me. Scottish. Yeah, that's Scottish. right. He does that joke Gerard Butler makes in the play in the plane film about the Scottish uh, Air Force or Navy. Oh, the Royal, the Royal right. Air Force. Yeah, the Royal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you you know? have to, yeah, flew for England, whatever. Yeah. Uh, going back to this great film. <clears throat> The Pope's Exorcist. Uh, what's the goofiest thing that you remember Ooh. from this film uh, that Ooh. made you really think, wow, maybe this could be good? <laughs> oh, wait. that uh, The moment that made us felt it could be good? Yes. Uh, well, the, uh, the, from like a, a goofy pr- perspective. What if you don't have an answer to this question? Well, then you just give us your goofiest moment. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know you got one? Uh, ooh, there's, there's, there's definitely a few goofy <laughs> moments um, throughout this whole movie. But the thing that made – this is a smaller moment, but it did make me <coughs> chuckle. And I think it's because of how Russell Crowe delivered it. But it's when he gets to the villa and he takes a swig of his whiskey because he's like, I've got, like, dust in my throat. I need to, like, <laughs> you know, clear it out. Clear it out. Let me take this big swig of whiskey. I thought that was hilarious. I think for me, this is easy. The easy one. The, every single time he appeared on his little moped, <laughs> the, you know, with his hat and his bags, and he's just chugging along on that thing. I'm like, that is the vehicle of a superhero. He's a superhero, and this movie is great. <laughs> I want to figure out what his sunglasses were because they were pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. They're the red ones, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, very like uh, very po- expensive Italian. No Michael doubt. pointed out to me at one point. There's a towel they put on Henry's head. Michael turns. To, it was pretty early in the movie, I think, or not even Henry. Maybe it's like the first guy. 
mm-hmm. in the first in one of the early scenes, but he's like, I have that same towel from Target. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, I, it's a waffle towel and, from Target. And, and oh then my as God. soon as you said that, I kept seeing items like the sunglasses and everything. I'm like, how many of these things that they just like go to the store and buy and like really didn't like yeah. try and make it from the eighties? <laughs> so it was, there was actually at one point I uh, respect the it. other the other uh, priest, Father Esquibel, Esquibel. Um, he had like a watch on, mm-hmm. and I thought, I swear for a second, I'm like, that's an Apple watch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that looks like an what? Apple watch. Okay, so there's, all right, so let's just jump into bold predictions. The sequel is time travel. We just realized that he's come back from the future Ooh, to, uh, to, to help up. Russell yeah, Crowe's character exactly. hunt down these demons before they take over the world. <laughs> there you go. Boom. The little, little thing. And I would see it. It's actually funny you bring up like, you know, recognizing various like products and things in the film. There's a cup. There's this TikToker that's uh, been popping off lately because he spends his entire account is dedicated to like uh, Star Wars live action content mm-hmm. and identifying random pieces of things that they use and then finding um, the links and sharing out with people. And one of the episodes of Mandalorian, I know this is super off topic, was. Um, the one of the, the the Death Watch Mandalorians is drinking out of like a silver cup mug thing or whatever, and he was able to identify it and like shared the link out, and <laughs> the sheer amount of people that went out and bought it and then are now reselling it for like five times its value. So you can get it for like twenty bucks and they're selling it for like a hundred, hundred fifty dollars. It's insane. It's crazy. Nuts. It's but just like, proof. It's yeah. just proof that diehard Star Wars fans are suckers. I mean, I'm a diehard. You know, the Pope's exorcist. I'm going to buy all this stuff now. So. <laughs> there you go. What was the goofiest moment for you, Ryan? <sighs> oh, my goodness. There's so many to choose from. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, my goodness. Honestly, though, I think the goofiest um, has to be, and this is wildly depraved, but it has to be any time the demon or, like, the, the, the Pope or the, one of the priests... Um, love interest in, you know or in demonic voice was like i'm gonna fuck you or whatever like anytime <laughs> that happened I, would, I just started laughing because i was like this feels really comical and inappropriate like over the top like very over, over the, the top, top. very over the top <laughs> even calling him gabe was fun too yeah gabe, gabe yeah <laughs> <laughs> shit was just weird oh my god wow we uh. kind of went through everything in the outline that was pretty quick <laughs> Quick one. That was a super quick, yeah, it's a very quick plot. I mean, before we, like, you know, obviously ask the big question, I mean, I think the biggest, inter- the most interesting thing here in the in, in reviewing and looking at this film was because of Russell Crowe. Right. So, like, where would you rank this in all Russell Crowe performances that you can remember? I mean, the performance isn't bad. No, it definitely uh, not. But in terms of, like, the movie he's in, <laughs> it's not <laughs> in the top five. <laughs> What do you mean, Andrew? This movie is perfect for him. <laughs> they created a perfect vehicle for Russell Crowe's acting to shine. I'm se- I'm serious when I say this. Like, I want to see more. You really want to see more this. of this? Yes. I, I want to really see more Gabriel. Do. I do. I think Gabriel. Gabe and his Vespa and his cool glasses. What about his pal? What is? And about now his, his Robin. His yeah. yeah, his Robin. Yeah, yeah. And and also, you know, we we touched on it a little bit, but the fact that the end that you don't know exactly. If everyone's themselves or if certain people have been possessed, I wish they actually that could, be, that could be a really fun like tension to play in the sequel. I wish where, they actually leaned into that though. Like I didn't, I didn't at least from watching it feel like there was any indication. Like they didn't leave any hints of like, no. any or did they? People could or be did possessed. they? If they oh, did, you it's very subtle. Hints, or but you know, I, subtle. I thought I thought there were a few hints though, right? Like first of all, the priest who goes to Guam. Right. There's a, you know, there's like a hint there where he's like falling down in front of a bleeding Jesus right. crying. Um, when you, the whole, the Pope himself, well, but you know, can, it's like, real quick, can we go back? Sketch. Can we go back to the, the priest that went to Guam? It would have worked and it would have been like a maybe if uh, Gabe didn't say what he said, which was, well, then I'll pray for the people. Of Guam. of Guam, like he made a Paper. joke about it, mm-hmm. and I think that disarms any it disarms like, it, yeah. yeah, it disarms it completely. Well, no, it sets up the sequel perfectly because uh, <laughs> Gabe isn't he's not prepared. He's gonna go in. It's gonna be a plot point. It's gonna be like, oh my god, I should. I, I really prepared. do need to pray for Guam. <laughs> okay, but I will say there are a couple of things. One, they talk about at the beginning that the devil loves it when you say he doesn't exist. 
And the idea that he would pray for Guam as if that's a joke, in a way, does sort of indicate that maybe he doesn't. I don't know. There was a lot of like the great. De- he talks about how the devil is a great, great deceiver, deceiver, and he's so good at it that he would make you even. You know, like it's possible that the point of the ending was that he's so good at it that even we're completely deceived because everybody seems normal. That yeah. feels like an added bonus. Like if the audience leaves and maybe one person, you know, Michael thinks that <laughs> it's somebody who's no, like, I believe it too. Somebody like there's, some producer is like, Oh, we did it. We did it. This is like, you don't, oh, you don't think there's like weird possession Lucas. going on. Come on. This is like George Lucas's Darth Jar Jar. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, hey, it was hey, all hey. connected. Poetry. It's poetry. Oh. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks. There we go. Wow. This is um, this is gonna be my this is gonna be my Darth Jar Jar. Jeez. Half oh of the God. characters we see in the end are possessed. The Pope is possessed. Yeah, I think so too. I wonder what Pope that was supposed to be. <laughs> Pope McPope. I, I mean, I guess uh, we, we can look probably it up, look right? it up. It's 1987. Yeah, the so whoever the Pope was in 87. If I had more look it up. hands. I would look it up, but I gotta control these cameras. Who was the Pope in 1987? Google says Pope John Paul II. That makes sense. Did not look like that guy at all. <laughs> yeah, he did a little bit. Pope uh, John Paul II did not have a beard during his reign. Yeah, no, Whoa. Pope John Paul never looked like that. Yeah, so I think they I don't said, ever call him that, though, right? So, like, it, what do you mean? Yeah, They're they both just old say white guys. My Holy Father. Or yeah, the Holy they, never, Father. they never specifically uh, say. Yeah, they never specify which Pope it is. Yeah. So again, and they never specifically say this is on Earth. So. This could be anywhere. Yeah, but there is an actual <laughs> Father Gabriel and Morth. And when I looked up the yeah. sunglasses, the actual guy came up. Oh, wow. Oh, well, there we go. Oh, so, whoa. He's actually known for maybe sunglasses. that stuff. No, no, no. I think I was just typing Gabriel and oh. Morth. Mort. Uh, he does, doesn't look at all like <laughs> Russell Crowe. Well, I think it's that time <laughs> because I don't really have anything else to say about this except, you know, answering the big question. So, Krishna... You should ask it first. Oh. Uh, who do I want to start with? Hang on. Who do I think is more... Okay, Arjuna. We'll start with Juno. Arjuna, was the Pope's exorcist good? No, it was not good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you. so surprised. You know, you're, your Arjuna, time. you're right. It wasn't good. It was incredible. Oh, God. It was an amazing film. It should go in the Smithsonian. Krishna, it should. I have a question. Can I, can I ask a follow-up question to Krishna? Sure. To my question? Krishna, I already know what you're going to say. Well, actually, we'll let you answer it, and I'll, I'll ask the follow-up later. So. Oh, okay. Ravi, was The Pope's Exorcist starring Russell Crowe? Yes. Good. <clears throat> it's, it's sad that we can't, like, split our answers. <laughs> no, no. You we have to be get. definitive. This is what's yeah. part yeah. very black and white. There's three, there's three of us. That yeah. way there's I, I always... Get that. I get that. But I'm yeah. going to say what I'm going to say. No, the film was not good. <laughs> but Russell Crowe was good. Okay. And I say that in case he ever sees this. He knows that I'm, you know. you pro you Russell Crowe. Right sure yeah. I respect that. I yeah. respect that. I don't want him to, like, you know, put out a hit squad on me. He'll put out a hit squad on YouTube, but I'm good. Krishna, <laughs> was the Pope's exorcist the first Avenger? Good. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, it was good because I had so much fun. Oh, and my barometer wow. for if something is good is if I'm entertained. Well, and I was yeah. very entertained. And uh, yeah. So what it was, was your what was me. your uh, your theater like? Because ours was um mm. uh, it was probably like I don't know like twenty percent capacity. A little more than that. Um but we had like a lot of people like just kinda of, not heckling, but like laughing. Um, oh, you know, here and there. How was your theater experience? So um there were five of us total. Oh nice. Uh, besides me, it was two couples, Ooh. and everyone else in that theater was over sixty-five, wow. and they were laughing. <laughs> and uh, that and I really, they were, we were along for the ride together. Like it was me and these old people, and we were having a blast. That's actually kind of fun. <laughs> yes, yeah. that actually sounds like a good. Yeah, that sounds fun. Christian, my follow-up question is: Is this movie better than Triple Frontier? Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, wow. I haven't seen Triple Frontier in a few years. Go with your gut. Go with your heart. Yeah, based your, on what you remember your and your soul. experience. I'm going to I'm going to say this is I'm going to say the Pope's Exorcist is better than Triple Frontier. Holy shit. I know what I'm yeah. getting Christian for Christmas, the double feature DVD <laughs> collection of the Pope's <laughs> Exorcist and Triple Frontier. That would be a DVD, weird combination. I wish that DVD 2 pack existed. 
Just oh that. god, they're so good. You, you know, just go buy can, them and put them in a box yeah. and send it. They they do some digital uh, twofers. That's like true. I got Annihilation and oh, that's a great film. Uh, the Arrival as a twofer digitally. Ooh, what is, is that? Good? Because they both start with A, not because it's by I the same know. director. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to this by because they started. It was a, a it was a coincidence. Yeah. The director thing was a coincidence. Yeah, because that director's <laughs> going to be moving on to B movies yeah. now. The box, board oh, games. <laughs> well, I have a, I think Russell Crowe would ask the two of you since you said no. Were you not entertained? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not entertained. No, I was definitely looking at my watch by the end. I mean, for sure the ending, I think, because it was just kind of, uh, oh, we're going to do the typical ending where the good guys win. Uh, that kind of ruined, wrecked it for me. And then... Yeah, the whole, like, the demons fight blood yeah. CGI. I was like, okay, well... Yeah, that right. kind of killed it. If they, uh, I think if the movie had ended, you know, where it was like, oh, the demon did kind of win. See, uh, I think... Similar to, like, how Smile kind of ended, where... Mm. that demon did kind of win i would have been like oh this is a good film but this I, so is just it's just too it was just too silly i would have so maybe that's why i liked it because i thought the ending was ambiguous mm-hmm. i was yeah. like did the good guys win because i really don't think so <laughs> yeah yeah i wish i had yeah. that read on it but to me it felt very straight yeah very black and that's white fair. I, I hate i hate to say it but annihilation and arrival were directed by different people Oh my oh, god! Wow. I was right yeah. there. They broke by A. <laughs> yes, I was so right. So then, yeah, it's definitely. Yeah. Oh wait, you know, is it is it the same uh, Studio? musical composer? Is that what I was thinking? Uh, so, or is it someone different? Denis Villeneuve directed yeah. Arrival. Right. Uh, let's see what who did the audio Annihilation. No. Oh. So who did? Yeah, who directed Annihilation? I listen to the Annihilation soundtrack sometimes. It's good for D and D stuff. Yeah. Uh, oh god. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Johan Johansson. Yeah. Who uh, sadly has passed, but um, one of I I can't believe I had to look that up. That's he's huge. He's also great for D and D, and one of our movies is sort of ba- one of our movie soundtracks is based on his work. Uh, Coplifter. If you haven't seen it. But Ooh. he he did so he did the music for both. Uh, I'm looking it up. It's possible, or at least it was some kind of connection. But maybe it was just a couple of really good sci-fi's. No, both because they have A's. <laughs> That's it. One could have been a rom-com. One could have been a documentary about birds. No, different music. Oh, well, then yeah, I don't know. It must yeah. be Christian. They're, they're just going with awesome way. sci-fis that begin with A. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe same production. You know, like same company that. Yeah, they, same they produced product. It. Yeah. Or yeah, distribution. Or distribution. Yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's going to do it for us here on Was It Good. Thank you for listening and bearing with us as we break down the amazing Russell Crowe in The Pope's Exorcist, where. Me and Arjuna were right and Christian was wrong. Uh, <laughs> as always, you can find us on the social medias uh, at Twitter at Was It Good, on Instagram and TikTok at Was It Good Pod. Check out our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash was it good. Our website, was it good dot info. Our next pod is sadly going to be on the season finale of The Mandalorian. What? This is news to Christian, by the way. 